okay if you see some recent memory loss and then appreciate sensory loss in your body or you see some motor dysfunction what do you think can thalamus be a culprit don't you think so yes it is yes this thalamus which is a part of your diencephalon major part and what it has to do it receives all the sensory information and concerned with your memory learning alertness consciousness wakefulness and sleep also now we will study various parts of diencephalon right now concentrate this mid sagittal section to show various parts of the diencephalon at the very top you can see the thalamus and just below there lies the hypothalamic sulcus and below that the major structure is hypothalamus now you can see that there lies an arrow with the purple this area is showing what the subthalamus and if i take this picture towards the posterior aspect of the thalamus you can observe the pineal gland and the habenular commissures that will depict the epithalamus and if the posterior aspect of the thalamus is shown it could be showing the metathalamus okay have you ever seen a space station control room or think it is as a signal core of an army and what you are looking into if this green color structure is thalamus it is receiving all the sensory information all around from your body senses and they are being processed in this green color structure called as thalamus and then they are supposed to send towards the heart centers like that of the headquarters like your cerebral cortex the basal ganglia and the other centers in which it has to be in touch like your brain stem your cerebellum and when this happens it can easily function accordingly to that of uh, it has to play the role in your sleep wakefulness learning memory sensory and the motor function okay as in this picture you can easily see that this green color thalamus is sitting on the top of your brain stem as you can very well observe that this is a brain stem and on its top the thalamus is residing or sitting right there are two thalami if you can observe that these are being connected towards each other through the interthalamic adhesions right and that can be easily understood if we see another section i will definitely show you now here what else you see you can observe that the narrower anterior part is lying and the posterior wider part is lying which is called as pulvina right now in this picture you can very easily see that the pink color area is showing the interthalamic adhesion and you can see it from the superior or the inferior aspect because you are supposed to look in between to that of two thalami so we will study structure of one thalamus that will be the exactly copy of the other thalamus right in this sagittal view mid sagittal view i would like to show you the extent of the thalamus that anteriorly from the interventricular foramen and posteriorly up to the top of the superior colliculus it lies in between and on its very top it has got the corpus callosum and uh, there is also the structure that is lying below is the septum pellucidum and uh, it is present on the very top of the brain stem right now first of all we will see the anterior end then we will observe the posterior end called pulvinar then we will see here the metathalamus including the lateral geniculate body and the medial geniculate body now we will see the lateral surface and the uh, medial surface of course and the superior surface now along with the lateral surface there lies white matter called as external medullary lamina and on its superior surface there lies the stratum zonale and what special we can see that on the very center of uh, this thalamus we observe a y shape 
white matter this is called as internal medullary lamina it divides thalamus into various parts uh, on the whole let me show you that this one is the anterior part this is the medial part and this whole larger one is the lateral part right okay this picture is very well showing that this green color both thalmi how they are sitting on the top of your brain stem right and the internal medullary lamina is separating it into various parts right the coronal section of the cerebral cortex is showing or revealing the two thalami right you can observe in this cut section the coronal section that the two thalami are of course lying and what they are holding in between there lies the cavity called as third ventricle right now we will see in this picture that how this y shaped internal medullary lamina is going to divide the thalamus into major parts having various nuclei here you see that in the v shaped part of this lamina is holding the anterior nucleus and on the medial aspect there lies a nucleus called as dorso medial nucleus or medio dorsal nucleus right and now concentrate on the lateral aspect that what is going to happen first of all let me make you clear let me clear all these markings now i'll show you that uh, how this picture is going to show the lateral area to depict the dorsal tie and the ventral tie where lies the dorsal tie the dorsal tie will be showing first of all in the lateral area what that is this is the lateral dorsal nucleus then you observe the lateral posterior nucleus and then you observe the pulvinar and 1 2 3 these three are forming or are included in the dorsal tie of the thalamus now concentrate on the ventral tie that includes the ventral anterior nucleus in the green color then you can see that ventro lateral nucleus in a little bit turquoise color then you observe the ventral postero lateral nucleus in the purple color and a smaller one the ventral postero medial nucleus in the mauve color right and of course the lateral and medial geniculate bodies are posteriorly along with that of the pulvinar is it clear okay one easy and important thing that how we learn the name of these various nuclei so concentrate that uh, in the dorsal tie what is going to happen or what is prominent there are three p supposed to be done in the dorsal tie what are they first concentrate that lateral dorsal this dorsal means which is equivalent to usually to that of posterior another thing the lateral posterior another p and then comes the pulvinar with the another p so these three are included in the dorsal tie and uh, very simple rest of them are all ventral right the ventral anterior the ventro lateral nucleus then ventral postero lateral and then ventro postero medial right now it becomes more easy to remember okay uh, in addition to all these major nuclei of the thalamus there are so many uh intra lamina nuclei you would um, observe in this white matter they are called as intra laminar nuclei midline nuclei and the reticular nuclei they are also dealing with so many important function of the thalamus right okay in this picture superiorly you are observing the thalamus and we have to concentrate on to the anterior nucleus and uh, let's correlate it with that of your sagittal section of the brain and you observing few things you can see on the very left side the mammary body that also gives afferent connection to the thalamus called as mammalothalamic tract then on the very top you would be observing the cingulate gyrus and then you can see the fornix is there and of course the hippocampus 
and uh, if we concentrate just below the thalamus you observe the area that includes the hypothalamus now see that what they are going to do they all are connected with that of your anterior nucleus having afferent and efferent connections and now what they are supposed to do they have to deal with your memory emotions behavior regulation and uh, how they do because they are communicating with your cerebral cortex and of course of your uh, limbic system and uh, are connected to your hypothalamus and of course are projecting to the cingulate gyrus so let's repeat the function of the anterior nucleus because they are supposed to uh, take information uh, that me mark even through the prefrontal cortex right and when it happens so in the meanwhile it has to deal with your recent memory your emotional feelings and uh, are supposed to be integrate the somatic visceral and even olfactory info right now in this picture the green color area is showing your dorsomedial or medio dorsal nucleus of the thalamus and on the left side you can see the afferent and efferent connection of this nucleus of the thalamus with your prefrontal cortex and even the olfactory area and in the lower picture you can see that they are getting connected to that of your hypothalamus and amygdala right and in this way this part of your thalamus or nucleus is supposed to deal with your emotional behavior memory and it has to organize and plan plan you would say the higher cognitive thinking right and uh, definitely it has to perform this whole function as it is projecting its uh, information towards the prefrontal cortex and of course is involving your limbic system so let's repeat the function of this dorso medial nucleus that it has to integrate the somatic visceral and olfactory information in relation to your emotional and uh, other subjective feelings right okay now we have to talk about the nuclei that are in the or called as intralaminar nuclei or midline or reticular nuclei they are basically concerned with the reticular formation of your brain stem right and uh, in this way they take part in the uh, various information like alertness consciousness wakefulness or simply the arousal reaction and the send efferent to all parts of your cerebral cortex right and in this way your body functions smoothly okay now here we have to concentrate on the medial and lateral geniculate bodies the green one is the lateral geniculate body and the yellow one is the medial geniculate body right now concentrate entirely you can see this is the eye so we are interested in the optic tract and this optic tract is supposed to be used as an afferent neuronal loop right and uh, the efferent after passing through the thalamus nuclei they are supposed to enter into your visual area or visual cortex of the occipital lobe the visual area 17 and all the visual information from your opposite field of vision is supposed to enter this uh, lateral geniculate body and functions accordingly right now we have to talk about the medial geniculate body this yellow color one it receives basically information from the tectum through its uh, inferior colliculus the brachium of the inferior colliculus that takes information uh, finally from the lateral lemniscus and is supposed to enter into thalamus or you could say its medial geniculate body as an afferent fiber and from thalamus the efferent fiber will finally enter into the superior temporal gyrus for the auditory uh, you would say information for hearing right concentrate on the posterior most uh, nuclei of the lateral tire which i would like to say is the ventral posterolateral one what it has to do 
it has to take information from your limbs uh, let me mark it the upper limb and the lower limb and uh, if you recall the nucleus gracilis and nucleus cuneatus they are supposed to give fibers they would uh, definitely decussate and form the medial laminiscus and uh, they become the afferent fiber towards this nucleus of the thalamus and from here they have entered into your cerebral cortex where this is the post central gyrus area the area number three one two or you would say the sensory cortex now what this nucleus has to do they have to act as a relay station for uh, i would say the sensations of touch pain temperature is the exterior septic all information and what else they could be taking other proprioceptive information from the body uh, leaving behind the information from your face right and along with this medial laminiscus there is another laminiscus the spinal laminiscus that would take part in that very nucleus for the communication and the spinal laminiscus that is basically if you can recall is made up of anterior spinal thalamic and posterior spinal thalamic tract and being uh, joined by the spinotectal tract right and they all carry information which are crew touch pressure pain and temperature right so this is how all the sensations uh, from the spinal laminiscus which i just mentioned and the sensations like fine touch two point discrimination and the stereognosis and uh, all the proprioceptive information through the medial laminiscus they are supposed to enter into your ventral lateral nucleus which is ventral posterior lateral nucleus actually of the thalamus right and for the spinothalamic tract let me mark you that sensations of the pain of any twin prick or any burning sensations are uh, supposed to pass through this spinal thalamic tract and they are going to touch this uh, ventral postural lateral nucleus and then again to the sensory cortex right now what about the ventral postural medial nucleus right what is going to happen about that uh, postural medial nucleus let me highlight it for you now we will move back to show you that this is meant to take information from your face region through the trigeminal nerve which is going to form through its uh, i would say the nucleus of the spinal tract of trigeminal nerve it will be forming the trigeminal laminiscus and finally will reach to this ventral postromedial nucleus and relay information here and then again they have to reach towards your post central uh, gyrus of the cerebral cortex which is again the sensory cortex area number 312 now what they are going to do they have to relay the information in pulses coming from your uh, i would say face head uh, region right now this picture is showing you that your gustatory or taste sensation from your mouth region is supposed to be taken from where can you observe the tongue from here what cranial nerves uh, are taking part for this taste sensation these are 7 9 and 10 right and uh, finally they are supposed to take information towards the ventro postro medial nucleus right and uh, basically they both are using the trigeminal and solitario thalamic laminiscus and uh, towards this postro medial nucleus and finally again towards the uh, post central uh, i would say sensory cortex again meant for information from your face head and taste or gustatory sensations present in your tongue region and this is how these two nuclei work now uh, let's repeat the function of the ventral postro lateral nucleus and the ventro postro medial nucleus first of all this lateral nucleus that has to do again 
you have to uh, think about the pain, touch and temperature. These all sensory info are supposed to relay here and then finally they have to project towards the somatosensory area of the cerebral cortex, right? Now we have to concentrate about the ventro postro medial nucleus. Basically, it acts as a relay station for uh, information which are sensory gustatory or taste from that your, your face and then finally they have to reach again towards the sensory cortex, right? Of the brain stem and of course that of thalamus you can see and here you are observing the lateral lemniscus that how uh, it's formed and what structures are contributing to it. The cochlear nucleus definitely concerned with that of your 8th cranial nerve, the superior olivary complex and uh, how they are crossing and reaching towards the uh, inferior colliculus through the brachium of inferior colliculus and definitely to that of the medial geniculate body of the thalamus for relaying. And finally, if I draw the cerebellum, it has to reach towards the temporal uh, lobe, temporal lobe uh, where the auditory uh, radiations are supposed to enter and all these afferent and efferent are concerned with the hearing, alright? Now let's talk about the ventral anterior nucleus. This is supposed to take part in the coordination of the movement or uh, to initiate the movement or to stop the movement. So relays motor information and definitely involves the basal ganglia as well, right? Now we have to talk about the left over nucleus that is the ventrolateral nucleus. This is again has to deal with your motor information because it uh, projects the information towards the substantia nigra, the corpus striatum you would say and reticular formation and uh, premotor cortex definitely involving all the areas and again deals with the motor information right now we have to talk about the lateral uh, posterior and the pulvinar both they are supposed to deal with your uh, cognitive uh, and determine the prominent visual stimuli and involved in the process of visual information and they project to the visual cortex right okay here the afferents and efferents are shown so concentrate from the bottom towards the top this is the spinal cord this is the medulla oblongata in the central region is the pons this is the cerebellum the midbrain and thalamus on both sides or two thalma of course and this one is the memory body area and uh, what else we see the cerebral cortex the cingulate gyrus and these are the part of uh, basal ganglia the caudate nucleus and the lentiform nuclei right these are the basic structures taking part in this whole afferent and efferent fibers now we will see what fibers are being shown concentrate that here through the dorsal root ganglion the fibers come in through the spinal nerve and they have to cross over to form the anterolateral system or you would say the spinal lemniscus finally and they ascend from the various regions of the brain and finally into the thalamus. Then you can observe after that if I can make enlarge view of it that there lies the medial lemniscus. Definitely they are coming from again the nucleus gracilis and cuneatus and joining the this uh, thalamus now you can also observe that the trigeminal lemniscus is there taking info from that of the trigeminal nerve nuclei which is the main sensory nucleus the spinal or uh, lemniscus we have already mentioned and you can see that these all information are entering towards the main area of the cerebral cortex and no doubt we can see that other areas are involved too you can see that input is also coming from that of the cerebellum as well right 
and uh, this uh, basal ganglia region is also involved. In this way, a fine coordinated movement of this thalamus and its functioning are supposed to take place. Another important thing I would like to show you that there lies the hypothalamic nucleus, right? Here you can see and here you can see, right? Another important chart I want to share with you. Concentrate that the lateral geniculate, medial geniculate, ventral, posterolateral and ventro postromedial. They are sensory in type, right? And then concentrate that the ventral anterior and ventral lateral, they are supposed to deal with the motor action, right? Now, after that, concentrate that anterior nucleus and dorsomedial is concerned with your limbic system. Now, what else? You can observe that. Uh, let me mark the pulvinar and uh, see this one, the pulvinar, the lateral posterior, lateral dorsal. Or you can see the dorsal tie has to do the multimodal dietal, right? Then, of course, the reticular nucleus and other intralaminar nuclei, they are located intralaminar and are concerned with the arousal or wakefulness responses, right? Let's summarize with the help of this chart the function of the thalamus that it acts as a sensory relay station for all the information towards the cerebral cortex and maintain alertness and consciousness in your reticular activating system. So in this way, it is concerned with the control of the muscular movements in association with the basal ganglia your motor cortex and of course cerebellum and integration center for your sleep and electrical activation to induce sleep as well right now about the applied anatomy thalamic syndrome that is due to the geniculothalamic arterial branch of the posterior cerebral artery when it gets included there is infarction in the particular nucleus of the thalamus, usually the posterolateral and posteroventral nuclei. And what clinical picture you see here, you can observe that there should be the pansensory contralateral loss in the lesion, paresthesia and even the thalamic pain should be there. And what else you see? You can see the transient hemiparesis, hemianimus, hemianopia, and then you can see the tremor, the hemitexia, and there could be the coriform movement at spatial neglect, and all this is on the contralateral side of the lesion in the thalamus, right? Okay, there is another applied anatomy related to thalamus, the alien hand syndrome. This hand would be showing the uncontrollable and unwilled movements of your upper limb. And even a person cannot recognize about the movement of his hands, right? And uh, what else is there? Usually, this type of lesion is associated with the lesion of the corpus callosum and your frontal cortex area. But usually, if there is an infarct in the anterolateral and posterolateral thalamic territories, this type of hand syndrome can be observed. 